Hey, millionaire. You don't often hear stories about anyone cashing in 61 winning lottery tickets in a single day. In fact, I'll go further and bet you've never heard of that even happening before. But that's exactly what an Ivy League graduate did in 2020. And he's not working alone. He's suspected to be a part of a small group of Ivy League graduates who are somehow working together to cash in on lottery wins across America. But exactly how are they pulling this off? Have they actually worked out how to beat the lottery system? Are they making any profit at all if they're buying that many tickets? How does a mysterious company fit into all this? Keep watching as we try to unravel the mystery of this strange group and their impossible lottery winning streak. It's September 2020, and a 27-year-old walks into a lottery office claiming his 61 winning Hoosier Lottery scratch-off tickets, and he can prove it. All of the tickets were for the same $7 million mega cash game, and even though they're quite pricey, selling for $30 per ticket, his winnings sure were significant. With most of the young man's tickets winning about $1,000 and three for a huge $10,000 win, he left the office that day with 88,000. That's not insignificant. Of course, it set off alarm bells. No lottery officials are going to let this kind of thing slide. Soon, they discovered a much bigger mystery than they were expecting. They quickly discovered that this unknown 27-year-old was a Princeton University graduate named Manuel Montori IV. You wouldn't think anyone with a number in their name would need to make money by winning the lottery. But that wasn't the biggest concern flagged up by the people investigating him. They were mainly worried about the discovery of Montori's 18-month lottery winning streak. It turned out that the 61 winning tickets were definitely not his first lottery tickets to take home a prize. And they definitely didn't give him his biggest win either. But the real concern came when they realized he wasn't working alone. It appears Montori's exceptional luck is part of a scheme that includes at least three other Ivy League graduates, Matthew Gibbons, Hannah Davenroy, and Zoe Bionayuto, all fellow Princeton alumni. Together, the group has seen some pretty spectacular paydays thanks to several different lotteries around the country. Thanks to the investigation into the mystery, we do know several of their biggest payouts, all bigger than the 88,000 that sparked an interest. In March 2019, Montori collected $100,000 from the DC Lottery. That December, the DC Lottery unknowingly gave the group another payout. This time, it was an incredible $1 million, which was collected by Davenroy. In the same month that Montori collected the $88,000, Davenroy also collected $121,000 from the Missouri Lottery. And just one month later, Montori collected possibly their biggest win yet from a Missouri scratch-off ticket, totaling $5 million. All these wins came to light thanks to an investigation by the Indy Star. Still, it's entirely possible that there are more that haven't been identified. This obviously raises a couple of questions. Nobody knows if the group is just incredibly lucky, but that doesn't seem likely. So have they actually invented a way to beat the lottery system? Or are they actually investing more money into lottery tickets than they're winning? But if you thought it was already tough to figure out, it got even more complicated when someone discovered that all four group members are connected to a mysterious company called Black Swan Capital LLC. Remember that giant $1 million win just before Christmas 2019? It was collected by Davenroy on behalf of Black Swan Capital. That certainly adds to the mystery, but we do know one thing thanks to a helpful store owner. Darian Kreitz is the manager of Smoke and Lotto in Bloomington, Indiana. She sold the group one of the tickets that won $10,000 in September 2020. She said that in the final months of the mega cash game, two women who identify themselves as Hannah and Zoe were buying out all the lottery tickets the store had for that game. The two women claimed that they were working for a man who was conducting a study and that the results would be shared on YouTube. She says that they would buy up to 400 tickets at a time over several visits that started back in May 2020 and they would ask to be notified when new stock arrived. They kept doing this until Kreitz was informed by the lottery that the game had sold out and she wouldn't be able to sell them any more tickets. By the end of the buying spree, Kreitz estimated they bought around 1,600 tickets at the cost of $48,000. However, she only sold them one of their 61 winning tickets. The other 60 were purchased at more than four dozen different locations around Indiana. That means if they spent $48,000 at Kreitz's store, they probably spent a similar amount of money at other stores as well. That would come to a total of at least $2.3 million. And that's just the money spent on the tickets, excluding all the travel costs, manpower, and time they would have to spend visiting different towns to get their hands on them. It's a staggering amount of money spent on lottery tickets, and certainly more than $88,000 they ended up winning. 
but we don't have any confirmation that they had spent all that money. And if they had, it would have paid off if they'd won the $7 million jackpot. So are they actually making a profit from these schemes? Well, it's not the only time they're suspected of having done this. A gas station convenience store owner in Missouri has a similar story to tell. Two women were visiting the store three times a week for several weeks to buy out their stock of $5 million cash extravaganza scratch-off tickets. This all happened as the lottery was preparing to close the game, which had been operating for several years. That's an important detail because at least one of the three top tickets had still not been claimed and time was running out. Yet again, they were spending an incredible amount of money, buying 20 books containing 20 tickets each at every visit, with each individual ticket costing $20. That works out to about $8,000 per visit, paid with cash or cashier's checks. And the store owner claims that they were doing the same thing at two other nearby stores, and at least one more store in a nearby town. Would you also try to beat the lottery if you had this kind of money? Let us know in the comments. Still, even though they were spending thousands of dollars on this game, this one seriously paid off when it ended them finding the last remaining $5 million ticket. But as we know, it was Montori who collected the prize instead of one of the women who bought the ticket. The women in this case are assumed to be Hannah and Zoe, but it wasn't confirmed. Lottery experts and statisticians have said that the group's activity sure looks like a long-standing strategy to improve their odds of beating scratch-off games. Their strategy seems to rely on data about ticket sales and available prizes, which are published for the public to view. For example, the Hoosier Lottery updates its website every day with information about how many prizes have been claimed on each scratch-off game. Anyone can see this information. The group could be using this information to work out when to buy up tickets to increase their chances of finding one that will give them a big win. But, of course, None of this is possible without significant amounts of money, and that might be where the mysterious Black Swan Capital Company fits into all of this. In economics, the term Black Swan refers to an extremely rare and highly consequential event that is easily explainable, but only in hindsight. That's a pretty interesting choice of name for a group of people who appear to think they've worked out a way to shake up the lottery industry. The company itself is classified as an open-end investment fund and was registered in Delaware in June 2019 by Montori and Gibbons. The address, strangely, leads to a boring white frame house next to a cemetery, the same address Montori used to register to vote. And that is about anything anyone knows about the company. You don't want to miss out if this story develops further. Subscribe to our channel. We always have the best money and lottery stories. The group is just as mysterious as their company. We know they're all pretty smart, with degrees in philosophy, physics, computer science, and history between them. We also know they all come from wealthy backgrounds. But despite how much we know about their educational backgrounds, that doesn't give us much insight into their lottery scheme or mysterious company. Of course, reporters have tried to reach out for comments, but none of them seem very inclined to talk. The most anyone has heard was from Zoe, who answered a reporter's call to say, call me back in a year, it's exciting. But a year has already passed without any word. Maybe they're biding their time, just waiting for the right time to execute a plan that will send shockwaves through the lottery industry. Or maybe the experts are right, and the group system didn't increase their odds of winning quite as much as they had hoped. And lottery officials don't seem to be very concerned about the group's activities. After all, they're not doing anything illegal, and maybe their winnings aren't big enough to be a concern. However, with total winnings of 6.3 million, perhaps they're better at this game than anyone thinks. At least one biostatistician believes they're winning more often than should be expected, so they might just have access to secret information that the rest of us never get to see. Only time will tell if this group is about to do something incredible or completely illegal. What do you think? 